Welcome back to the box office. Shimmy is unfortunately gallivanting in the UK where he will be commentating on the three test matches over there. But I am joined as always by Skulk Berger and we've got a very special guest, former Springbok and Springbok coach Nick Mallet who joins us today. We will be reviewing the big game between England and New Zealand and previewing Scotland and South Africa, the big one on Sunday and all the other international games of the weekend. So for now, the box office is open. Welcome back guys, uh, Scala. It's been about a month since we were here last. That's right, um, John. Any, did you go away? Um, I don't think I went anywhere, no. I Golf. can't actually remember, I mean, like, since we're talking about the autumn series, national, internationals, how's this weather, guys? Yeah, the weather's not ideal. It was, it was, yeah. it was 35 degrees last week and it's Baltic today. We, yeah. We're hoping that we will have bet, better weather at, in Edinburgh on the weekend and we'll chat about that, Cam. Nick, I know you're so, you're no, so keen to talk. Very <laughs> so keen to talk. Can I, can I welcome you first? Or would you like to welcome Please yourself? No, 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 no. no I'd, I'd really like to be welcomed by you. It'll be a, uh, for a first. It's welcome, Nick. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's good to be here, John and Scott. Great to see you guys. So when, when was the last time you guys were together in a professional rugby setup? Not super sport. Probably the Barbarians game, 2009. Yeah, 2009. 2009. Yeah. Nick took charge with yeah. Alan Solomons, and then like we uh, just picked up for the Barbarians, went on the steam for five days and beat the All Blacks. <laughs> That's right. As we do. But it must have been very nice for you, Nick, because you don't like being in control, right? <laughs> so the, <laughs> the Barbarians set up so, with the coach. God, I got better. I did get better. I must admit, I was pretty hands-on with the box, and then I started getting better as I got. I realised with the Barbarians, when you're getting these uh, this quality of player. Yeah. It's important to make silos, you know, lineouts were yeah. Victor, you know, loose forward defence, I think where you, it was uh, Scala, the back line was Jacques Ferry. We had a hell of a side. Yeah, we had, yeah. uh, we had uh, the back line, not one single player had played with the guy next door to him. It was extraordinary. And we scored three, four tries against Brian him. scored three. Hat -trick, three. yeah. And Brian scored a hat-trick. And in that game, the game finished. It was so nice to be able to tell the story. You know, they had, the All Blacks were attacking. I think we were up by seven points. I think yeah. we won eventually 24-17. 20, 20, 25-18. Oh, there you go. It wasn't I mean, miles yeah. off. Yeah. And, um, and I'm quite old now, you know, John, so it's good <laughs> to remember that. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Skulk turned over the ball in our 22. And uh, we won the penalty. The game was over. And Joe Rocococo from the far left wing went racing across and Jamie Roberts, two guys, I mean, not, not South yeah. Africans, yeah. and they just hugged him as though we'd won the World Cup. It was fantastic. Eh? No, no, we, I mean, those Bar Barbas games are always special. But I remember George was picked to play eight. I was on the flank and then Nick had like the old school, the Gary Teichman, like pick the eight and then just drop it <laughs> yeah, inside yeah. for yes, your exactly. fellow flanker. Yeah, yeah. And we always had, a, needless to say, me and George had a big night the night before and George could not do that little pass. He was running there, dropping it, dropping it <laughs> at his feet. Yeah. So Nick said, there's one more chance, otherwise he's playing flanker on the weekend. He picked it up, fumbled it, he says, okay, Scala, hey, <laughs> George, you play flanker. <laughs> Was Remember that Vipia Nell doing the sprints? Yeah, oh. yeah Vipia, Vipia got Nick's... Uh, Vipia obviously uh, yeah, overshot the mark a little bit the night before and then he took exception to Matt Kita. we don't know why. Yeah. And then we just put him on the side of the field. Nick made him do sprints to apologise the whole week. <laughs> so he had a hard week. The rest of us had an awesome week. We also yeah, cancelled the funny. training because we were stuck in traffic. It was raining, went wasn't it? To, it was raining, oh. went to the pub, had a bit of a team building. Yeah. Um, but the most amazing thing is, like, Fru de Pria was nine. Yeah. Gitto was 10 and we started the game playing a lot of rugby and then soon as we got our noses in front, Brian scored two in the first half and then yeah. scored one in the back, Matt Gitto just settled things down and kicked corners and Taking said, listen boys, yeah. we just gotta work, we've got to work for this win because the All Blacks are going to run at us and we uh, managed to do, the, do it for the first time since you know, right. 1973 or whenever the, the original yeah. one was. Yeah. 1971 I think it was. 1971. Yeah. The, um, was that the most talented team you ever coached? I think the Bok team was probably the most talented, but um, in, in terms of picking up a side and them all understanding their roles yeah. and coaching themselves, basically, yeah. and just having a good time. You see, you play the All Blacks, it's never fun. They always try, I mean, they, they started with, with Richie McCaw and Dan Carter, and so you, you want to win the game. And, yeah. uh, and what was really interesting was seeing in, during the week, uh, they'd just come off Northern Hemisphere tours, so there was a lot of relaxation Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> I think I said a word on Wednesday. I said, guys, we need at least a captain's practice. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, then on Thursday, it slowed down. Guys probably got back at around about midnight. 
And, uh, and I remember handing out the jerseys and uh, seeing everyone was very keen to win the game. So once you get that right, once you get a good Gies in the team, it was a talented side, but uh, I mean, some of the Bok teams that, uh, that, uh, that I coached, I was very fortunate. A couple, a couple of things that stood out is like, obviously, Quentin Geldnes and uh, uh, yeah. Carlo, Carlo Del Favre. Del Favre. Yes, yeah. Italian. Yeah. Italian, yeah. 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 like exactly. they played S under 21. Like yeah. Quentin was my S under 21 roommate yeah. when we won it in 2002. Yeah. And for them, what it meant to obviously beat the All Blacks, they haven't been in a position to do that before. Even Nick was in tears no, afterwards. That's right. You know, well, how much it meant to them. And then for the Priya, so we obviously had a super successful year in 2009, beating yeah. All Blacks three times. But then we played golf on the Friday before captain's run. And for the Priya had a panic attack on the back nine saying, listen here, guys. Who the hell do I think I am? Like, I'm a Springbok rugby player. We're playing the All Blacks. Are you so arrogant yeah. to yeah. play 18 yeah. holes on yeah. a Friday before captain's run? Yeah. And you're playing the All Blacks. You know, I'm going to make an ass out of myself. And yeah. the guy pitched up and played incredible. So That's right. it was a special week for us. There's probably a learning in that as well. When you have such a talented group, experienced guys, where they, they take ownership. Yeah, exactly. Right? You know, you, you can coach as much as you want, but yeah. if the players yeah. don't take ownership, you know, yeah. then it's very difficult. Whereas... You know, far less coaching, obviously, during that yeah. week, but the guys understanding what their roles are and then just exactly. executing it. Yeah? Exactly. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good lesson for all coaches that the, yeah. the closer to the game, the less you must be impose yeah. yourself on the team. Early on, it's, uh, you know, just a, a recap of what happened on Saturday, on the Monday, and then, uh, you know, the attack and defence. Once you've got that settled, over to the captain. I, I think that's what I was doing at the end. Sergio Parise with Italy was very good at that. And he said, please, he didn't even want the coaches on the field when he was doing the captain's run, which I agreed with. I must say, there's few teams that focus us the mind, like the All Blacks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's you pitch, true. You, you pitch up true. there as a barber, thinking, yeah. like, if I don't pitch up today, we can take 70 yeah. Yeah. at Twickenham. Yeah, exactly. you know, especially be, a game like that. It'd be an embarrassment yeah. to yeah. not only yourself, but the yeah, barbarians. So right. I think all of us were a little bit nervous in that. Because uh, it's all, up. always in the spirit of barbarians rugby. Also, you want to yeah. throw it around, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it suits, especially that generation of the of the All Blacks. It suits them like it fits them like a glove. Right? It did. It yeah. did. But I, I think we said before the game. Listen, it's not fun for anyone if you if yeah. if you're getting 30 points. You know. <coughs> so let's play it like a test match. You know. Yeah. You know. The week would be as though we were playing a game of golf on Saturday. But everyone knew, everyone knew it was the All Blacks. So by the time that Saturday came, there was a lot of focus. I mean, it was as quiet a change room as I've ever had before a test match. Yeah. The guys were properly into it. And I think that feeling of perhaps we've overshot it a little bit this week, we yeah. better... If we. And to pay back the Barbarians as well, because no one said to them, you know, you've got to get back early. It was just, uh, you just had to perform on the day. You're just asking them for 80 minutes in a whole week. That's not a lot to ask. And um, any any other funny any funny stories that you remember? I think outside of rugby, I heard I heard that outside. Well, that in that week there was one with Vip Nala. He was, he was uh, sharing with Jacques Ferry, and I think it was it was the Wednesday night. We gone out and everyone. I mean, I left at about midnight, and I think there was a bit of a late night go there. And, uh, and he wandered in. He'd been drinking red wine, glass to glass, with every single South African in the team. So, you know, he'd had a bottle of like two and a half bottles. So he's properly drunk. And he was in bed and in, in a little pair of red scants. And Jacques, Jacques Ferry turned the light on at about 3.30 a.m. in the morning and banged on the door, turned the light on, and then was, got someone to film it. And he said, wake up, wake up. We've got to get on the bus. We've got to... And he shot out of bed, this guy. You know, this, he's a big prop. You know, because the tiny red skins. And he just... Took a look at it and then he put his head on the on the can he me <laughs> 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 and I mean the picture of that was just absolutely wonderful. <laughs> but there've been lots of I mean there've been lots of stories like that on tours. I mean you know John, you were probably behind a lot of them. No no no, so. I wasn't involved well, ever. I mean Rusty certainly but, was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll we'll get to Rusty yeah. a little bit later as well. Um, we are moving into the the autumn series um, in Europe. Before we get to that, though, because yeah, it's meant to be closer to summer, even though it doesn't look like it at the moment. Um, there's a story, and, and with summer comes cricket season. There's a story about you apparently hitting one of the greatest all-rounders ever in both and for three sixes in a row, in an over. Uh, well, it's not entirely true? true. Not okay. entirely true. Don't I, let the facts come I, in. No, no, I didn't <laughs> like to get the facts in. I actually made 36. We went in there and I think we were about 80 for five. I came in at number seven. He was bowling off spin because uh, the parks at Oxford had a turning wicket and he didn't want to run. He was too lazy to run in off his long run up. So, and he had got about three wickets turning it like this. You know. So 
they were all around the bat. And I just thought, no, no, this is, um, you know, I can't block here. I'm never going to last, you know. So smacked one back over his head and then into car corner. And um, he's had a few chirps, you know, but having played rugby you know, all yeah. the way through South Africa, <laughs> the chirping <laughs> yeah. didn't bother me, you know. So as I hit the second one, I said, go fetch it, you know. And, so, <laughs> <laughs> and then, he, then he got a bit cross and he bowled, off a short run up, he bowled a bouncer. But I saw it coming because he just, as he was walking back, he was doing this. So I thought that's probably going to be... So I was swaying away, and the keeper, who had a cloth hat on, it, re it almost drilled him in the forehead. Right, I mean, the abuse between those two yeah. afterwards. I, could, I remember the, the, the reason why they, they thought it was three sixes and one over, because there was a journalist called Peter Jackson, who was, I think, after two o'clock, he'd had too many gin and tonics. So, so long he lunch. phoned me up long lunch, and he phoned me up. He said, I hear you, oh, you played against uh, both of them. And I said, yeah, in fact, I made a quick 36 and then got out. Yeah. And he thought a quick three sixes and then got <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> or, no, quick 36 and then it was over, I think I said. So he probably oh, okay. thought three sixes and well, After a few beers, you can always claim that the third we'll six. So you yeah. forgot about <laughs> it, but it went <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. We'll yeah. go with the three sixes. Yeah. I do remember us playing against you one cricket game as well on Skulk's Farm at Melbourne. Yes, yes, yeah. that's right. And you weren't yeah. competitive at all. Not, not at, at all. all. Not at all. I um, came I off a long run <laughs> and they said, when are you going to yes. bowl your fast one? <laughs> <laughs> I remember him retiring the opening batsman because they so, were batting fast enough. They were batting too slow. They retired <laughs> his own batsman. Yes, Captain, get out. Give everyone a chance. Okay, let's get into yeah. the rugby. Um, England versus All Blacks uh, on the weekend. Massive game. Um, obviously, after World Cup last year. But before we get to the actual rugby, it's always a tough task playing the All Blacks. Um, mm -hmm. How's Joe Marler's comments before about the Haka? Strategically, what was he thinking to do Not that? Not much. Eh? Yeah. I think it, probably on a, on a Twitter feed or whatever, mm. he's on social media, yeah. drawing attention. You know, nice, he knows it's going to throw a rock in the water and they're going to be waves. I, I don't think in, in, in deep down, you know, he doesn't like the Haka. I really don't believe that. I think it's one of the one of the most wonderful yeah. challenges for any rugby player in the yeah. world to face. And, um, and I think he probably afterwards said, sorry guys, I, you know, I was up on my bandwagon. He, he, he announced his international Retire. retirement. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also the article that Jones, the journalist wrote, was also, you know, I thought, you know, quite out there, uh, mid midweek. You don't need to fuel the All Blacks fire. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, and, and I think what we grow up <coughs> with it in fast is the greatest challenge. And I think the All Blacks from their point of view, they also know they're privileged to have the opportunity to do the haka. And yes, yeah. it's become more theatrical over the years. But like for us, we understand the challenge. They are laying down a challenge to us. And for us as Springboks, we always love that moment. Yeah. It's a special yeah. moment yeah. for us. So I think it's a respect both ways that was yeah. needed. I don't think the team that played Jamie George captain, no, no. they wouldn't partake in that. There was a bit of a, a move forward from both sides. Yes, that, quite that, nice. I yeah, didn't we, mind that. Yeah. yeah, like we would never do it as yeah. South Africans. But for, for the English side, I think it was, you know, a show that they're up for yeah. this and, you know, they yeah. want to confront the All Blacks. And for a third time this year, they came within, you know, a whisk of beating them. For me, when you asked me before the game, if, if they didn't lose Felix Jones and another uh, uh, member of their coaching staff, I think they would have been favourites going into this game. But the fact that they lost those two voices, yeah. I thought, and obviously the media build-up, I thought the All Blacks probably going to pip them. And I think the All Blacks, on the balance of it, created more opportunities. But, yeah. you know, still, like, you know, George Ford, you know, like, for me, the bench this time for the All Black once this year made a bigger impact. Yeah. I think... Damian McKenzie, <coughs> D-Mac off the bench, yeah. adds a bit of yeah. extra energy. And then Tui Peloto coming off the bench in the second he was, half. He was huge. Was a couple of big hits and great carries. Eh? But, but that, was all, that, was almost, um, that was almost a big thing for me. We saw um, uh, Chandler Cunningham South. Yes, yes. Yes. He made South. one, one yeah. big hit yeah. on um, uh, Tupavai. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, that's um, right. Yes. For, uh, yeah. I think it was the first half, and he kind of celebrated oh, yeah. it as yeah. if they won the game yeah, exactly. and whatever. Cool. Yeah, of Whereas Patrick Tupeloto, wow. massive hit on kept on Burbank, on yeah. Burbank in the second, Burbank. and he just got back up, got so, in the line. Yeah. Exactly. And is, it. is that almost, uh, um, you know, the difference between between the two? Because we saw in the Haka both teams yeah. coming closer, yeah. but when you do that, you need to back it up with the performances. No. You know, whatever you do, yeah. and it's the first time that I actually saw the All Blacks responding in a different way as well where they actually, where they went, actually forward. went forward yeah. Yeah. yeah but during the game itself you need to forget about that stuff and and you need to stay in the moment and and don't worry about the the outside stuff and yeah. what was that the difference maybe I at think, the end or is it i think i think that as the culture says 
no, just the All Blacks, it matters. It really, really matters. For, for England, they want it to matter. You can yeah. see the guys are pushing themselves to try and get to the level yeah. of intensity that, they, that, that, that is yeah. required, required to beat that to beat team. We have it because it's innate in our South African culture as it is in New Zealand. For them, not quite. They need to high five whenever they do something physical. But how good was Satiti? Yeah. Hell, yeah. That, guy, that youngster was good in that game. I think like, it, like, since he's come on board, the balance of that Lustria is all better. Yeah. And we've yeah. been asking yeah. for a long time. They were trying to replace a like for like with Jerome Kano. Yeah, up comes this kid. And he, like from his first test match, yeah. he's up with his work rate yeah. and the ability to play with the ball, whether that's post contact, like yeah. the offload to Mark Delay, yeah. how's his two finishes again? Yeah. yeah. Like, I can't believe he didn't play the game in Joburg against yeah. us. He Gee. was on, on the bench. Must have been issues. Standing up defenders, you know, work rate. But, like, he was incredible for me. But also, Skala, like, um, Sam Kane, obviously, who, who, who has already announced his yeah. retirement from international yeah. rugby. He's been good. Post this year. He's been really good. But the combination, the yeah. combination yeah. of him yeah. and Satiti and, and Savea, yeah. you know, who, who, who will be the guy, you know, filling that spot yeah, for them next year? Will it be Dalton Papaliam again or similar. Blackadder maybe? I think it frees Sam Kane up to play a bit of rugby, you know. Yeah. Like often when you had Ioni there, I think you almost overworked your open side flanker because yeah. you've got Adi Savio who's, you know, at this stage of his career, when he does something, he's hell of effective, yeah. but he doesn't do it that regularly yeah. anymore. You know, then up, up, stops, uh, up comes Lawrence Atiti and like he's carries, tackles, work right off the ball, like it's a, a wonderful addition. And also on that matter, like the English loose forwards for a long time, we couldn't see balance in their three, yeah. but having the two Currys, Ben and Tom, mm -hmm. you know, I think Ben, you know, replaced his brother and put, put the yeah. same workload in. Yeah. Ben all at number oh, eight well. has been a revelation yeah, for them. Yeah. And then in Cunningham South, they've got a yeah. bit of firepower yeah. now. St and stopping power. And stopping yes. power. Yeah. yeah. Also New Zealand born, wasn't he? I think he's yeah. he grew up there or something. So quite a bit of I, I I thought it was a good physical game and I also really liked the way that they did defend. They kept yeah. to that same out in defence. Yeah. England. And yeah, England yeah. did. And and uh, Troubled, troubled the All Blacks. I thought yeah. I thought that they were playing backwards quite a lot. With especially, the, with in the, especially in the second half. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, th I thought they were lucky to get away with a lot there, where they were making a lot of errors. Obviously, discipline again for the All Blacks. Ref very yeah. let it go, didn't he? Australian sort of not really. And I think you know if you, I mean, we always you know compare this side, the All Black side, against a team that we played, probably the greatest professional rugby team of all time. But there's a lot of errors. They created a lot of opportunities yeah. in that, that first half. You, you think about, you know, the Lawrence Atiti break in the past to Tupo yeah. Vai. Yeah. In our time, they didn't mess up those opportunities. Yeah. And there was quite a few of them. I think they created three clean breaks in the first half yeah. without yeah. actually capitalizing. Then it's a different perplexion on this game. But I, I really do like where England's trending. You know, yeah. they, I think they're going to be <coughs> our biggest challenge at this end of their tour comfortably. Because I, I thought that first half was really entertaining, uh, you know, high quality. Yeah. Yes, m m mistakes at times as well, but I, but I, I it was it was good to watch. You yeah, know, from yeah. both sides, intensity high. Um, you yeah. know, and, and like you said, I think England, England said they didn't play badly. A nah. couple of things there, I think, Jean. First of all, I don't didn't understand the substitution with 20 yes. minutes to go, yeah. where you bring Ford on and the scrum off at the same time. It's almost like pre. Yeah, especially when, when Marcus Smith was going playing well. Playing so well. Eh? He yeah. was doing so well, kicking well. He just had a great hand in that first, in that one try. Yeah. But apart from that, he got a 50-22. He was, you know, he was bubbling over, you yeah. know. Now suddenly you take a guy like, like that off. I didn't think that was a, a great idea. And the second thing is um, scrummaging. When they, their, their second yeah. uh, line of front row, front their second yeah. front row, is nothing like the, the starting front row. So if you're getting Cole and Baxter on, and, yeah. and you know, we, I don't think in South Africa, our South African team's got two front rows that can match each other. I think they're going to really struggle. So yeah. without yeah. Stewart and and so, I mean, I mean, and Genge, I mean, Genge exactly. Obviously, George Ford misses a tackle on Talo. I mean, that's easily done. He's he's one heck of a finisher. But then he, he gets the penalty to win it. Oh, it's the upright drop kick. Two Peloto, two Peloto knocks it, but then the scrum, five meter yeah. scrum. Yeah. Now we know South Africa in that position with our second string front row, <laughs> we're going for it. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, you are getting put in a box. You're going to ask questions at the scrum. No loose exactly. forwards are going to be able to break off. After that, we can empower. Like that scrum, the fact that they got it away, they yes. were lucky with. They, they were, were lucky. serious pressure there. And then the drop kick, you know, you know, you feel you feel hard for George Ford. Yeah. You feel sad for him because this, he, that's what he does for a living: is yeah. go and snatch games like that. But 
on the weekend it was in East Town. But I mean, well, it wasn't well planned that yeah. top goal. Yeah. It looked like they were hoping to get a hoping to get a, a penalty from, you know, playing off nine and, yeah. and pods of three. They were hoping and they were moving it away from in front of the poles. Whereas the I yeah. mean, the scrum was right in front of the poles. I mean, ideally, they had to get Randall. What is his yeah. name? Randall, the scrum off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. His his pass is funny. Our little details make yeah. such a difference. Was up, yeah. It was up here and yeah. a bit of a looping pass. You know, it just put him a little bit more under pressure. Also, than also like it's. It's ironic, but same with the kicking play now. The fact that they've shortened the time to kick makes the box no. kick more contestable mm. now. Like you're almost in a kicking in a chaos scenario. The ball comes out, ref calls it, goes up. You've got less time as a defence to sort of set up. and de So the best time to do that drop goal is actually off the back of a good carry where yeah. you get in yeah. behind them or it's maybe the number nine is exactly. in. But like defense on on the yeah. on the heels a bit. Yeah, who was on the bench for New Zealand? Cortez Ratima, yes. number nine. He was up waiting for it. It was a static carry. No, he, he actually uh, Ratima started. No, uh, Roy Guard. Roy Guard. Roy Guard. Roy Guard was. Cam Roy Guard. Yeah. Pressure was good on him. I mean, he was you know yeah. he was a bit jittery when he took the. Drop. But almost like they took it at the wrong opportunity. Yeah. You should go a quicker ruck where you forward and you know the fence have got to repeat exactly. and then you get the chance and is there is it too much emphasis on the last couple of minutes of that game and the mistakes made yes the two um forward mistakes um and and maybe reverse back to the drop goal before half time yes marcus smith same yeah. thing yeah. and and i think the thinking was great from him you know as a yeah, as yeah. a tactician as a fly off yeah. getting the three points to lead at half time yeah. he misses that you know, so but but now we're only talk, talking about what happened. Oh, that, was, yeah, I mean that sport that comes down to boils down to big moments. Yeah, no one remembers. You know, like the first half really, you, it's the match-winning opportunity. You yeah. know, same with same with us when we lost the Test match against Ireland. You know, yeah, yeah, the drop. And we focus on the last drop goal. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, no one's talking about the three missed opportunities by the All Blacks too. They could have had they yeah. na nailed yeah. down two of those. You know, it might have sure. been. You know, they would have been. So if you look at the three games they played this year, I mean, it's all come down to one score, hasn't it? Yeah. So it's very, very close. But what's frustrating for England is that to lead by eight points with 12 minutes to go oh, no. and give that up is, and then miss a penalty and miss a drop, it's starting to become a habit. And the funny thing is that New Zealand couldn't score points in the last quarter yeah, of in the rugby, rugby championship. No, they could right. not. Okay. Four games, yeah. England led in all three games in the last quarter of the game against New Zealand yeah. this year. And lost all three games. Yeah. Do, do you, know, do you think that, they get negative? Do you think they start so getting negative? So here's the question Did they park the bus too early? Yeah. Uh, was, was that the case where you park the bus too early, you're in the lead? Forward, control a, the game. Yeah, a, but, but Smith is Smith's having a great game. Front row is having a great cast game. Cast your minds back to our semi final in the World Cup yep. against them. Same thing. They should have never lost that game. No. Yeah. Yes, I mean, obviously, we had a moment of brilliance, Henry Pollard, and we got one entry, you know, Erges Neman scores it, too. Ox was turned it around. But did they park the bus too early? I mean, it's something that's been coming a while for them. You know, they should have closed yeah, that game geez, out. And, and I think if you ask those players, they would feel the same way, yeah. the English players. And I think they feel the same about this. Yeah. Now, how do, you, how do you believe that you're actually good enough, you've done enough to win this game and go win it? You know, don't try and hang on. Don't wait yeah. for a... Yeah. And but like, and then you look at the box. You know, um, Dmac comes on, slots that Jeez, conversion out the corner and, and against us, 30, 30 straight in front, thirty yards out, and misses, misses it high right. Yeah, but I mean, there, yeah. there was another question: is that I don't think Bo Bowden Barrett has had his kicking uh, frustrations over the years, and Dmac same thing. Yeah. Both both of them slot all yeah. three conversion yeah, kicks from exactly. wide Football out. Yeah. Th that's the difference, difference in the game. Yeah. Um, you know, so. It's so easy, and, and as a coach, Nick, like, is it, is it difficult in, in, uh, after a result like this weekend to really just have, uh, you know, know where you're going, clarity yeah. as to where you're going as a team? Because it's one, one difference here, one slot to yes, tick there, exactly. and you win the game. Exactly. And does that define the game, or, I, or I, is I, it all about the I, results? I think, I, listen, obviously from a coaching point of view, it's about the results, but from a group point of view, it's about progressing. You're always yes. wanting to get better. So why are we still making those mistakes? Why are we making those mistakes in the last 10, 15 minutes against England? Uh, sorry, England, against, New, against the All Blacks. Yeah. Um, you know, we were, they were close, weren't they, against France? Again, in the Six yeah. Nations, yeah. they could have won that one as well. So they need to get over the line to be in the top four, top five in the world because it's what we've been able to do. We, yeah. The one point, one point, one point, I mean, that's not by chance. We managed to get over the line. And, and 
this is the frustration for them. So in the in the game against, I think, who are they playing this week? Australia, are they? Australia this yes. next weekend? And, and then, then us the us. following weekend. Mm. I mean, if they lose two of the three, it will be a very disappointing series. Yeah. Playing at home at Allianz, or well, now it's no yeah. longer Twickenham. Not but Twickenham. It's a fantastic we, we still, stadium. We still call it Twickenham, yeah. I think. It says Twickenham. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beautiful stadium, yeah. fantastic supporters, great crowd, good atmosphere. I mean, you've got to do it at your home ground. I mean, you really I'll tell you where it gets hard. It's like, you know, you need... You know, something tangible to take away, yeah. to have that energy in the next week. How do you, you know, if you get a win, everyone pitches up on Monday, today, yeah. training, there's a buzz around the crowd, yeah, there's a buzz in the meeting, That's even if it's by one point, yeah. you understand that your process, we are getting rewarded for the effort yeah. we put in. If you don't, like three against the All Blacks, this is, Monday is a hard place. A losing change room at the international level, mm. yeah. even though you think there yeah. is a pathway yeah. and there's momentum and we're on the right track and that's the reason why we can compete against All Blacks, not getting that result hurts more than you actually get out of it. And that's, that's the danger they've got going into this weekend. If you can't replicate that energy, which is a hard thing after a big effort like that, you can easily get that banana peel game where all of a sudden now you go yep. lose against Australia. Oh. And then the media, and then the media is at yeah. you, and then you face the box, yeah, quite right. and then you think, okay, if we lose this game, there might be serious ramifications for not only the players, coaches, captains alike. So it's a hard place, international rugby. One one area where you know I, I was like flabbergasted how bad it was um, was the lineouts with the lineouts both both sides. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I thought Cody Taylor going off early for New Zealand was a massive setback for them because he was really good in the rugby championship yeah. as yeah. well. Um, but what, what do you put that down to? You know, both teams, was, was it the contesting? Was good it contesting, good contesting. And, and, and listen, every hooker, every hooker throws in differently. And I don't think that's his strong point. You know, they yeah. got the, the guy who came on just after yeah. Amour. 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 He made a, well, New Zealand, he made yeah. an impressive tackle in that game as well. Yeah. But, um, but he is, uh, you know, he was a bit short on some to the back of the line out. And, uh, and, uh, but if you go back, sorry, just, I wanted to finish up with England. I think four of their penalties, three definitely, but four kickable penalties. One, yes, it was four, because Ford missed the last one, were from tackles off the ball. Yeah. yeah. So it's not as though they're, they are sort of creating, putting the opposition under pressure. One could argue that, you know, the tackling off the ball, it's good play because they're not giving yeah, it to yeah. a guy. But, I mean, you don't get that every single game, four yeah. tackles no. off the ball, do you? So I, that's I, 12 of their points. I like them officiating that, though. No, me too. You know, that, yeah, that I yeah. did like, and I hope that they continue with yeah. it because a lot of the times we see we see a referee yeah. picking up on something one game and then the next week, yeah. you know, it just yeah, goes exactly. again. Um, quick quick mention on the, on the officiating on the day. All right. I thought, uh, I thought loose in the scrums and very play on in the open. Yeah. In the main, but but he wanted to get the get the, the game going, and I thought he did yeah. compared with the northern hemisphere. I, I guess we all get triggered with the you know, Leonard Brown's mm. event where he's so yeah. low. Yeah. You know, um, Theo Dan moves yeah. his head. You down. You're looking down. You've got Almost a target. Almost with the head as well. Yeah. Theo Dan is scary. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just where do you go? Yeah, it's tough. And then you almost yeah, yeah over the over <coughs> with the correspondence that he was upright, which he's he's not. He's yeah. like in that yeah, chair position. So yeah, those little things always trigger me because I I mean I really feel you know he was getting yellow card for repeated early tackle, uh, and and the hard thing with the early tackles where players have to tackle now. Yeah, you have to be ready for so, it to make. So you're yeah. watching yeah. the ball comes, yeah. the guy sh puts a Shows, play on yeah. the ball. Yeah. You, you committed. You, yeah. Yeah. Guy runs into you. The attackers, so you're going to hit him. You mm -hmm. can't let him just run past and get a support line. And so. even, I mean, because Jordy Barrett got uh, penalised as well, was it in the first half, where he, 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 you know, he made contact. Yeah, so he was in a position, off. but I mean, he did yeah. like a triple somersault yeah. backwards. So, yeah, you know, it's not as if he finished with the hit, but you get Because he obviously realised, OK, I mean, so he's not getting, he's the, not ball. getting the ball. Yeah. But like, you, what can't, do you, do then? you can't disappear. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't evaporate in clear sight. So... On another point, Scholar, I mean, in the same movement, the guy got two yellow cards. Yeah. So why yeah. wasn't that a red? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. So on, oh, the, no. on the red, what's your views on the new um, change in the red card, 20-minute minute, 20 minute rule? Very happy about that. Very happy about I think that the, the player who's who's been um, sent off for the red yeah. card offence doesn't get back on, but the, the team gets 15 players back on after 20 minutes. I think 20 minutes is a big enough... Yeah. A punishment from a team perspective, yeah. and it's and it keeps the game competitive. For, for me, it feels like we're putting a plaster over a, a, a old injury. Yeah. You know, like the fact that the player is guilty in the first place, 
for making a tackle and getting yeah. the technicality wrong. It's not foul play. It shouldn't be a red card. It yeah. still should be a yellow card yeah. offence. Yeah. You know, for example, Lynette Brown makes that tackle in the mm. first half. We can't gauge whether it's, for me, it's a penalty, yeah. Yeah. maybe a yellow. Yeah. For the yeah. officials on the day, that was probably a red card offence. He gets a red card, he yeah. goes off for 20 minutes. I still think it's wrong towards the player and the game yeah. that we get short the 20 minutes with 14 men versus 15 men. That's the a decision by the TMO getting it wrong. I, th I think yeah. still we as players should be, the benefit of the doubt should come our way. And yes, it's there for the change of yeah. our behaviour, but I think every single player now He's has changed right. his behaviour yeah. in yeah. the way where he wants to tackle. Leonard Brown was not upright. If it's upright to red card, you get 20 minutes, I understand. But he is bent. But if it's you down, yeah. I think the benefit should go to Leonard Brown in that situation. And, and especially, yeah. you know, in those tackle situations where there are so many variables, you know, if the guy lies on the ground and you kick him in the face, <laughs> you know, that, 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 that's <laughs> a red card. Exactly. You know, that's quite a red right, card yeah, and, and so be it. Yeah. Foul play. Yeah. But to... Um, yeah. To yeah. see the offence in the same way, you know, when it's uh, getting the tackle wrong a little bit, because we are changing behaviour, I think. Yeah. I think we are seeing a, a change yeah. in behaviour that are getting low, but you still sometimes get it wrong. Um, and to to have the same two different s scenarios being yeah. officiated the same, same way. way. That is but at, at least we don't get stripped for, for 60 minutes or yeah. 70 minutes or red card happens yeah, yeah. in the first yeah. minutes. Yeah. You yeah. don't get stripped of a spectacle for 80 minutes. It's 20 minutes and, and that team will go into game management knowing that you know they've got 20 minutes to survive. Because so often if you lose a number early on, it's yeah. 15 versus 14, that's some of the worst rugby games we've You'll seen. See, yeah, where exactly. The one goes in game exactly. management, it's almost yeah. like the referee yeah. then yeah. compensates yeah, the, team penalties, 14, the team with 14. That's right. <laughs> it, it becomes a hell of a tricky game as a, as a captain and, and, and spectator to manage. And Just the one thing for me was, all, uh, sorry Nick, before I get back to you, the one thing for me was always that the, for the team on the day to get the benefit. Yeah. You know, so yeah. so yeah. not that you get it. You, you yeah. give him a red card post game, and then yeah. the, the next sorry, weekend's we game get get it. John, just on that note, I think that I think that the referees have to do two things. If was it head contact, they've got. If they answer yes, then they go. Was it with force? Generally, generally, it is with force because yeah. the ball carrier is coming. Because rugby and rugby, <laughs> rugby exactly. So those two, you say yes to. So head contact and with force, it's automatically a yellow card from there, and then they say upgrade. Now it's a guy in the. In, in the TMO guy, who's got to be looking, for, and I think he's got to be looking for mitigating circumstances yeah. instead of looking to punish the punish, player. Yeah. This is where we're coming to your point. I think even if the ball carrier is getting low, yeah. then that's mitigating circumstance. 100%. You know, if if you've gone low and the guy then is a scrum off and you're a lock, you know, you can't low where can, can you where, go? Where you know, can you go? Because that's what they're trialing now as well um, at amateur level. Is if the ball carrier. Mm -hmm. Uh, down, leads yeah. with a head, yeah. then he can he actually gets yellow get gets yellow carded. Yeah. Yeah. But you look so, at all the ball carries. On, so every yeah. ball carry is head first now. He's low and head first. Yeah. Because yeah. you're protected. You're supposed to be protected. Uh, but to be honest, I think that behaviour has got to change. You, yeah. know? you, you just can't charge head first. Yeah. No, it's, just, you know, it's not safe. It's not safe for the ball carrier, but also the tackler has got yeah. no chance in this game. And we know this game doesn't work well if you benefit the one yeah. side a bit more than the other side. It's got to be a contest. Yeah. And you've got to give a tackler opportunity to have the to, contest. To, to precisely. Um, Nick, while you are giving your opinion on so many things, um, you, have, <laughs> you have made the scapegoat. I've chatted less than Scott. <laughs> you have made of, the scapegoat I'm, I'm proud for of calling high ticket prices yes. at games. What do you make of the £160 that they charge at Twickenham on Saturday? John, I, I, it's, it's a very simple thing. I was right in 2000. And I'm you've never been wrong. Well, no, I've right. often been wrong. Ask no. my wife, I'm often wrong. <laughs> but, uh, but with this instance, uh, you know, I just looked at professional, uh, professional sport in America and their principle is very simple. You do not hit the, the spectator with high ticket prices. You keep it manageable for a, for a husband and wife and two kids to be able to afford to go and watch either a basketball, a baseball, or an American football game. What you do is you, is you charge sponsors and your television rights. You really hit them hard so that you can then generate money to pay your players. In our country, we haven't, because there's no, there isn't any competition. To In our country, we're now talking about Twickenham and the England game, right? Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about that. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I think <laughs> if you look at 160 pounds over there, it is expensive. But if you had to go and watch um, 
out of Taylor Swift or something like yeah. that, you'd be paying 120, 130, yeah. wouldn't you? I, I wouldn't know. Did my, you also go to that show? No, I didn't go to that <laughs> show. <laughs> my son, I was with my son who said to me that actually it's very expensive from a South African point of view, yeah. but from there, expensive, but not out of the... Out of the um, what do you make of the progress of Razor Robertson and Steve Porthwick as coaches? He, he must have been he must have been worried, old Razor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, towards I don't know the end about of so that much progress. I don't know whether it's progress. He's been close against us twice. Yeah. And close against England winning, and close again against England winning. Let's have a look after France and, and Ireland. You know, a couple of years ago, we had to play France and Ireland, and we came second best. Yeah, uh, it was at the time when the referees weren't refereeing us all yeah. that well, I remember. But even so, it's hard. So let's wait and see for Razor. The Tour, if he wins four out of five, including the Italy game, that's yeah. a good performance. Borthwick is going to be judged not only on these games, but on the next, on the next Six uh, Nations. Six Nations. And then how good is he compared with... France and Ireland. Those are the two two standouts for me in the Northern Hemisphere. So I think if you're the All Black coach, you're always under pressure, yeah. especially this year, championship. You know, like Argentina was a big blotch in Wellington. Yeah, but definitely. That, if, that if was in the way they played there. And then they changed it around. And obviously, Leon McDonald stepped away from them. Um, and, you know, like obviously South Africa, in South Africa mm. was always, I think, going to be quite a hard one, for, especially where our team's at and where their team's, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like if they lose another two, say they lose, come up short against Ireland and France, I think, you know, there will be a lot of knives out yeah. for Razor. But I think they've got to have patience with him. You know, it's the first time that there's a wholesale changes in the management, yeah. which he demanded. So he's got to, you know, he's got to make sure he's got the right personnel in there. But also the identity of the All Blacks is it something that comes through. And it takes time because you still see them, you know, they want to play rugby and they, they make a lot of errors and put themselves under pressure by doing that, because their skill execution, especially in the second half, is not as good as no. their first half. When they're fresh, they're incredible. As soon as the box wore them down yeah. in those two test matches, yeah, similar in the England game, they start making errors in behind the gain line, and a lot of them, and that's what's costing them. And if you do that against Ireland, you allow them you know, entries yeah. into your own half. They're so efficient, they're going to put you to the sword. They're lacking a nine and 10, man. They, you know, always, they've always had Marshall Mertens and yeah. Dan Carter, and, and, and you know, it's just, you look there and you say, okay, Bowdenborough, 34, coming back, Richie Marga no, no longer there. Right to my God. Yeah, yeah. They're not, Youngster. They're you, know, not you, reckon, you reckon a guy like Aaron Smith you know, comes back from Japan, he gets a look in? Yeah, and Richie Mwanga. And, and Richie Mwanga. You stick those two guys in, it's suddenly a little bit different, I think, because yeah. they can control the pace of the game. And I think it's frenetic when yeah. they play now. They're so keen to you, play. To add to their loose force, stock, Shannon Frizzell was <coughs> over there, so yeah. he'll come back next. Obviously, yeah. Sat Wallace Atiti has been amazing, but mm. then you have another option. Could be Sam Kane's position, for That's example. Seven, yeah. the, uh, and Borthwick, they, it does seem as if, you know, they're talking about... It, him being a little bit too negative, again, parking the bus too early. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you know, it, it does seem as if he is a little, it's his nature to be a little bit not as risky in, in the way that they play, but they've got talented players. Is he? And better than Eddie Jones. Yeah. The last couple of yeah. years of Eddie Jones's career. Yeah, Eddie's still got the best record there. Yeah, yeah. yeah but like, not, for, not for the last three not years. But is, he, is Borthwick, is Borthwick moving in the right direction with this team? Yeah, I yeah. think the worry that we all had is when, you know, Felix Jones cited, you know, it's, it's a volatile environment. environment. Mm. Mm. You know, so, you know, that will come from somewhere. Why yeah, did he where, do that? Where does he want to go, eh, yeah, Felix? I'm not too sure, but I don't understand. Like the like, because the bit I know, Steve, like he's quite measured and yeah. he's yeah. a workaholic. Yeah. In the same way he ran lineups was just look at a million hours mm. of footage and come up with a plan around that. And I think there is a method behind like their evolution. They're playing some decent rugby. They've got exciting backs, Fayou Abosa on mm, the wing. Very yeah. good. You know, yeah. it's, except Furbank, Furbank and fullback as well. Yeah, is is incredible. So, um, yeah, I think there is. Nice depth in that England squad. Mm. It's about you know getting over the line. But like I think you know if they got one of these victories over New Zealand, we will probably say sit here and think, okay, they are trending, yeah, they which well. I still think they are. Yeah. They are. Um, rumor has it that you had on two occasions you were very close to being the England manager, Nick. How true is that? In I think it was 06 and 2011. Uh, mm. How close was that of actually happening? It was uh, it was twenty just at the end of 2011. I was approached and I was interviewed for it, and that's when they gave it to Stuart Lancaster. So I I actually thought I was in with a shot. I had um, I had Wayne Smith who was going to coach with me, 
And, uh, and I thought that would have been, we would have had a good four years there. That was when sure. Eddie Jones had a really good four years. Yeah, so, yeah. And then they asked, uh, uh, in, um, when, when Lancaster didn't get them out of their, of their pool in 2015, 2015 yeah. I, I got, my agent got a call to say, um, they're offering you the job. Uh, you don't have to interview for it. Um, uh, you know, we feel that we made a, made, a, made a mistake last time. So, but by that time, I'd had four years of super sport. I phoned up Wayne Smith and I said, what's your story? And he said, you know, I'm tied in with New Zealand and I, and I, I wouldn't look at it again. So, you know, I, your assistant coach is very important. The guy you work with, it's very, very important. So I actually turned it down and that's when they gave it to Eddie. Do you want to talk about it? No, <laughs> not at all, not at all. Uh, you know, the fact that I'm sitting here, John, uh, is probably because I turned it down. Yeah. Had two yeah. ablations, two heart. No, true. I, I'm, no. I get really passionately involved, yeah. as you well know, yes. with rugby. So if I invest as much as that, and suddenly there's social media, and there's criticism, and there's, you know, the stress the and tension, just it's just horrible. And it's yeah. like a boxer, you know, when you yeah. start out, you can take punches. And then suddenly at the end of your career, you're not taking you're not so, taking well, it anymore. so well, yeah. well anymore. Yeah. That's yeah. why we rather sit here and just talk about rugby than <laughs> exactly. we go home, right? I'm getting give our opinion. Yeah. I'm getting nicer and nicer to people, I promise you, the <laughs> older I get. <laughs> All Blacks versus Ireland this weekend. Predictions Oof. for that one? How do you see that one going? Also, uh, Cody Taylor out, Bowden Barrett out. Both of them out with head injuries. Yeah. Cody Taylor, Bowden Barrett. I, I go Ireland, eh? I'm going Ireland for this one. I think they've, they've really crossed about the World Cup. Yeah, and, you know, the up. whole Johnny Sexton yeah, thing yeah, and yeah. Rico Iwane yeah. thing. Exactly. Uh, apparently Sexton is there and thereabouts in the coaching staff as well. I mean, it's always nice when this, but it always seems this way. When we play against each other, there's no real spice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Maybe Rassi has something yeah. to say about yeah. Razor or Razor. Yeah. It's a lot of respect. The, eh? Yeah, maybe one player's name gets altered on the, the team sheet. When we go to the Northern Hemisphere, there always seems to be... Stories. Stories. Yeah. And they're not from current stuff, the stuff that happened yeah, back like in the day. A few years ago or 12 <laughs> exactly. years ago. And it exactly. Lingers. Do you remember when? And they uncover and remember the, yeah. the like, um, no doubt the Lion series where Tano Maga flipped Brian yes, Driscoll yes. on his shoulder yeah. will come up this week. Yeah. That's, there will be a big yeah. article this about it. So like. it all, you know, I, I mean, it all makes it a little bit more interesting to watch, but the build up gets a little bit more. So like, I, I wouldn't poke the All Blacks. Um, if, if I sit here, I would say, listen, yeah, I think play it 10 times, Ireland wins it seven times. Yeah. yeah. But like, I somehow think like Is this little razor side has got a way of sneaking this game. Yeah. So I'll go with All Blacks, but if they do it, it will be by a last minute penalty or try one, one point. Yeah, I think it'll be a, a, a one score to Ireland. I just think they're just further down the road as a team. Sure they are. And, uh, and just got the experience. Did you guys know that I was going to ask that question? And that's why you are wearing black and you are wearing green. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, John. Uh, nice, Johnny. <laughs> okay. This is uh, South African Good. Nice Scholar John. going South African green. <laughs> yeah, South African green. Good. <laughs> South Africa is playing Scotland this weekend. Yeah. yeah. They know pushovers. Um, I think it was a record win for them against Fiji this weekend. Do we read anything into that? Still a couple of players missing and a, a, a massive yeah. big red called Finn Russell that, that didn't play this weekend. Um, it's more the Scottish teams, Glasgow Warriors. What did they get out of playing the Sharks, which was a, a yeah. bock laden team? Yep. They, would have, they would have got a lot of self-confidence yeah. out of that, saying we can match them physically. And remember, Scully, if those guys do match you physically, they've got the skill set. Yeah. They've got, they've got some big outside backs. So they, they're a difficult team, Scotland. 18-3, it flattered us at the World Cup. I thought we were moments in that game where if that pass, you remember It was that, edgy. You know, it, it was, was edgy. It, it, yeah. Yeah, Arcee Graham time. didn't make the pass and he, they score there and suddenly it's, it's tougher. So I, I think that's, it's a very good game for us to go into and, and I'm sure the focus is on just getting the win. Don't be too, yeah. don't worry too much about the Tony Brown stuff. I think it's going to be dominate and physically get on top of them. And Scala, kind of, I mean, how important was that, that Glasgow tour as oh, a whole yeah. for them? Because, you know, close against the Sharks and especially those last two yeah, tries, yeah. Yeah. you know, that they scored towards the end and then beating the Stormers, yeah. yeah very um, motivated Stormers. You know, so how yeah. motivated will the Scottish Barbarians be this weekend <laughs> seeing that they've got 17 <laughs> <laughs> not Scottish look, players? I, I, yeah. Look, I think yeah. they were for the first 65 comprehensively outplayed by the Sharks. Mm. The Stormers, they, I mean, they were in with a shot. Like, I know the Stormers had 
uh, Ben Jason Dixon, Cabin Yellow Card to Marnie, yeah. um, Franz Malerba went off, so to Damien Willems, who's unfortunately missing out yeah. on the end of the tour. Yeah. But I don't think the Stormers <coughs> could have run away with that game. No, they, no, no. They, that was going probably Glasgow's way, if you look at the way they, how strong they were in the second half. But um, so for me, this game, their attack and their back line, mm. I think we've got to respect that as the Springboks. You know, this weekend, Hastings plays, plays just like Finn Russell. Yeah. More time against Fiji, more turnover ball, but then Tui Pelota is exceptional at he 12. Hugh Tui Jones, Pelota and Hugh Jones are a combination. combination. Very underrated. Then obviously, um, yeah. Darcy Graham gets a chance, scores yeah. four tries this weekend, equals Dion van der uh, yeah. record, and then Dion scores another one to go ahead of him. And well-known yeah. Scott. So, very <laughs> well-known Scott. Um, I think their loose forwards is decent in yeah. Dodge, Ferguson, yeah. and Dempsey. Yeah. But as loose forwards, we can only function of what the platform <coughs> is ahead of us, as Nick will know. And yeah. I think that's that's where you know, it, the odds comes to us, to our yeah. favour. Like their biggest weakness is our biggest strength, and we've got two of those packs. So I yeah. think you know, with the fact that Erkis Neiman's back yeah. playing well, we'll go six-two split, mm. and I think our pack of forwards will put them under pressure. And and I don't, I think for them. You know, parity will go a long way. I don't, if they do get par parity, it's a tight game. But I don't think they can get par parity this weekend. Not even close. Yeah. And who who, sh who should we be worried about? You mentioned a couple of names already. Who's who's think, their kingpin? Does it remain a Finn Russell? I think because that, I honestly, yeah. I think yeah. two people. Are, so they're 10, 12, 30. Yeah. You know, yeah. Russell, two people yeah. are Hugh Jones. Yes, they just function so well. They they play the right options more times than not. The the flow of exactly. of the attacking game is really good. Yeah. Got to get ball on the front. Do you get that right against the Springboks in their uh, defence, or does that create yeah. opportunities for us? I, th I think I think they won't make mistakes if they're on the front foot. They're a very very well drilled backline. Really understand, you know, when to play the short runner, when yeah. to play behind the back. They're really good. But unfortunately, you know, they need desperately for their front rows, their two front rows, mm. to handle. It depends on on how many scrums they're going to be. But I mean, they've got to handle our scrum, and we are going to go. Flat out eh, to win penalties in that area. Yeah. And when you think you've got Eben and Erchia Sneiman and Mostert back, I mean, cheapers, yeah. we've got some special players special now. Special players. Eh? So our tight five, you know, you can, you can, you can pick two packs yeah. that will probably match and certainly better the second half Scottish pack. So uh, that's where they, we've got to have a full go. Yeah, I think for them, you know, they want to play this up-tempo game and they want to string these passes together for mm. Scotland, but they, they mustn't underestimate Tui Pelota's punch through the midfield, yeah. how good he is, and playing shorter options off him. Of course, Finn wants it out the back often, but yeah. then we saw in Marseille in the World Cup game how many times we got to them, how many times he was on the deck saying, yeah. we get through the pack, we get to nine, through nine, we get to ten. And then he can get a bit frantic because he can do the miracle under massive pressure. Yeah, but he pushes it. But he pushes, he can forces it. It's almost, mm. but you know, playing down that expectation of doing the magic early on, like play the simple options. Yes, exactly. And 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 play three, four times, and then you know maybe go through the boot, try and get the ball back, try unstructured some uh, unstructured ball somewhere different by winning a contestable. But he often goes and goes and goes and goes, yeah. and they run themselves yeah. off their feet against you know a box defence. If we defend like we did against Argentina with line speed and not have the double system where we sometimes go, mm -hmm. sometimes sit, I think if we keep on going, we'll put them under a lot of pressure. Because we we can go toe to toe with them as well from an attacking point of view 100%. now, you know, in my mind. And and Russia, who plays ten, eh? yeah, it, it yeah. does depend. And it seems like well, I, I checked the weather, and it seems like not a lot of rain this week, and and not for the game as well, which which I think will will suit us, especially from a scrummaging point of view as well. Rossi on the week, um, during the week said that Cheslin Colby is the only player in the starting 15 that is irreplaceable. Do you do you do you agree with that? And who else do you think is also falls into that bracket? I would say Ox at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Now that now that exact Kitsi's no longer there. Yeah. Yeah. I would say Eben. It's very tough to replace him as a yeah. full lock. Peter, Peter Steph, Steph. The toy. Yeah. If, yeah. Peter Steph. It's, yeah. They they're quite a, they've. There are quite a few good players yeah, we've in got, that, we've, we've got, but we've got so strength and depth in, in We've centers. got a lot of strength and depth at wing as well, but like yeah. obviously Cheslin is a special talent. Yeah. Also um, taking account that Rossi now use him, uses him at a hooker a scrum to off. throw in. Yeah. Scrum, scrum off. off. Exactly. I mean, scrum no, off. No, 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 Rossi's right. Yeah. Like, he's irreplaceable. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you select yeah. him in five positions. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Yeah. During the rugby championship, we, we went quite deep into our resources from a lock point of view. We've got Franco Mostert back. Uh, we've got Erge back, who's, yeah. who's yeah. playing unbelievable rugby. 
do you think Ruan or Kia will, will start? Or, yeah, or will I you never bring in one of the other two? Yeah. Have you got any clue what Rassi does? I mean, no. I've got no, no, no clue what he's no. going to do during the week. It really, whether he plays Pollard to start, which will surprise people yeah. because uh, Marnie had such a good final test match. Yes. But then he wasn't all that good against Glasgow Warriors. So what is he looking yeah. into? You know, if two Pilotto runs hard at, at Marnie, Marnie, you know, he's got to make some big hits on yeah. Saturday. Whereas Pollard can match him physically Perhaps. So there are all these questions yeah. that come in, and it's just what he feels like doing, Rassi. You know, he's and got I, the the players. I do think like we we obviously not having uh, Sasha there, not having yeah. Damien Willems there, they actually does alter the way six two split six yeah. two split a little bit. You know, so Vili yeah. gets his chance. Vili is stuck on ninety seven test yeah. matches, so. Obviously, three, three on the bench. He, he, needs, he needs to get to 100 at some stage. Yeah. You don't want to be 99 not yeah, going into exactly. another year. So that is there. But like, if you had those two players available to you and taking an account that you've got six-day turnaround from Scotland to England the next week, mm. I think we might have seen a lot of changes, especially in yeah. the, who's playing Flav this weekend, yeah. who's playing 12. Um, but because we don't have that luxury, the bench might look a little bit different. But like up front, I think yeah, I think I'll start through, and I think he offers you more as a starter and work rate than he would do for me as impact off the yeah. bench. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, then again, we've got so many choices. You know, Cameron Hunter comes in the squad. You know, does he yeah. get a look in somewhere? Does he play against Couldn't Wales? Couldn't he be an open side flanker as opposed to a number eight? I've seen him play, Nick, and I'm, I'm almost of the point of view that he's solely a number eight. Really? Like I love him at number eight because it frees him up and mm. he sort of got that nice feel yeah. and he looks up Offloads. before. I think the the Bok open side um, job is a thankless task. Yeah, yeah. You've yeah. you've got to be grafting. Just play uh, over the ball, over the ball. So over quacker, the ball. Uh, has got his own way of doing it, uh, and I think this year is one of been one of his best years for the Bok yeah. playing towards yeah. the ball, especially. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think yeah, there's some other men who can do that job. Yeah. And then on the bench, you're like we can't. You know, Erich, 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 every time he, he's come on, and well, eh? how effective has he been? Jasper Vissa's ball Quacha. carrying. Quacha Quacha is, so what do you got? Do you, do, you, do you have Franco and Archia and Quacha or Elrich maybe, on the bench? Maybe we just start with Franco and Archia and then you go Quacha and Elrich on the bench. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, that's how many? Two, four? And then yeah. no, so, Eben, so you start Eben and Archia? Eben and Franco? Eben and Franco. And, and then the Archia falls out of the 23? Unfortunately for this weekend, yes. Or maybe he starts this week and not next weekend. But we don't know. We've tried to. But we don't know because we don't know what's going on what in Rossi's head. No clue. What, yeah. I, what I do know, what we won't do again, is the same 23 that starts this weekend yeah. is not playing next no, weekend. No, ever Cause, again. Because we've done that twice <laughs> and that doesn't work for That's us. What so we lose it's, it, it's not happening. Yeah. You, yeah. you made Rossi captain, Nick. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, asked him, asked him to take over yeah. from Gary actually. And, and but but then he captained the one test. Yes, match. he did. Have you been kind of blown away by his? His transition as a yeah. coach and the success uh, that he's I, had. Yeah, def I mean, listen, he was always a, a, a thinking rugby player. He wasn't the biggest or fastest or strongest, but he got into the right places at the right time. He analysed his opposition and what they were doing more than any other player I knew, and which, which then uh, gave him a, a really good understanding of what he was going to face that day. Um, I've, I've told a couple of stories about how he's come to me saying, what about you, you know, doing, doing this? Uh, can I do this? And whenever he's come up, they've always been great ideas. And then, and then of course, he was a player coach almost mm. with the, with the um, Cats. And uh, when you look at what he did, he managed to get a, a, a winner carry cup with Free State away, was it, against the Bulls? Extraordinary yeah, performance yeah. that was. And then to come... Six. And then as director yeah. of rugby, you guys would have known his organisational skills here and... With uh, Tutti, the, the, I mean, you guys got to a final. Yeah. So they had success here. You had success with Munster. I mean, he's just he's just always, funny enough, always with Jacques Nina. But, yeah. but yeah. I think both Jacques might be growing in a, you know, himself as a coach, yeah. uh, doing what he's doing. And Rassi too, perhaps it's a good thing for him to have to work with other assistant coaches like Tony. And um, and uh, he's got, well, he's got the... the, the, the uh, Sticky and, Jerry, and, 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 and Jerry Flannery, yeah, yeah as a exactly. Coach now. Exactly. So, so I think he reinvents himself almost every single time. We, I mean, we, you know, as as coach, we won the World Cup in 2019. Then he wanted to be a director of rugby, but he was still obviously heavily involved. Then he went back to being a coach. Yeah. Who's to say he won't go back to being director of rugby yeah. and get yeah. someone else back in? So, I don't think he's going anywhere, Rossi. And the, the, the progression of the team then, uh, Nick, yeah. you know, Tony, we've, you know, we've had lot, lots of conversations on Tony and, I really and, and the impact it. that he's made. Yeah, I really, I mean, I think, 
I think pr probably one of the most underestimated aspects of South African rugby over the last 10 years or 12 more, 15 years have been our backline play. We don't, yeah. we don't give it a chance. You know, yeah. We haven't had coaches who've actually backed our backline to say you guys can do what the All Blacks can do, what the French can do, what the New Zealand's can, can, um, can do, not the All Blacks, the Irish rather. So, so once you get a coach who actually comes there and says, try it. Have a go. Yeah. We're not going to shout, you know, you, of course you'll get a drop. It's the execution. You might not have passed perfectly, but it was on. Yeah. That was a really good decision to do it. And it, it makes us so much more difficult to play against as a team. You know, once you go in with a, with a driving malls, scrum penalties and, and, and up and unders, which won us the World Cup in 2019, the refs will stop giving you scrum penalties. They won't give you more yeah. penalties. That's just how it works. But you suddenly bring in counterattack with uh, with Villy and, and 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 the wingers, and, and, which we did for 2023. And now you're bringing in um, uh, strike moves from first phase. So it's not a mall all the time. It's a peel off around the front. It's off the top to the backs. There's a lot of variety going on without losing our physicality, our carries, our mm. forwards still go downfield. You know, we're knocking the hell out of the opposition defensively. I really like it. I think we, I think we really have got a group of players who back the system. They obviously like Tony Brown and they trust Rossi, you know. Yeah, yeah we just, uh, it seems like we're just evolving, yeah. you know, and not, not getting weaker in terms of our, our strengths, traditional strengths. We're just, we're just adding to it. And, uh, and I think really, that's, and that is the key. I mean, I played in Springbok teams where passing forward was a sin. Yeah. Yep. We've got exactly. passing forwards, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We've all been in those meetings where you know you run inside shoulder and you tuck. You, yeah. know, you, you exactly. can't, you can't look up. Oh, and now, and now to. with Tony Brown, yeah. like, yeah. you know, I asked him if there's a ratio between ruck to pass. Yes. Because he used to be one pass, one ruck, and he yeah. said the more the merrier at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Until we get Until somewhere yes, where yeah. we overstep the mark, yes, we're going to bring we it back. Rain it yeah. back. Yeah. But yeah. it's almost got to be. And you see Oxen chair play for Jeez, the, sharks. the Sharks. The way he carries yeah. is amazing. But all of a sudden he takes it to the line. Yeah. Soft pulls it out, out the back. back. It's a bit. Never back. used to do it. He's got the little hands. And, and I think, you know, you see now, you know, how comfortable a guy like Peter Steff, the two mm. looks on the ball in the wider channels, yeah, exactly. offloading. And you know, yeah. like it's because it's embraced in the team culture where you can play and you yeah. can offload and everyone's got to have a trigger mm. when or how to run square yeah. pass. You know, it's not shuffling a hot potato. Mm. It's making oh. the right and decision it. on the ball. And first and foremost is doing it on the gain line. Yeah, get and that's, where, that's exactly. when the box are at the most effective. But also, a, a mistake is not the end of the world. It, it's kind of getting closer to yeah. that yeah. that perfect yeah. game, and yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and trying it more and more. And the more you do it, you eventually become comfortable in exactly. in doing that. Um, we playing um, Scotland, England, yeah. Wales on this tour. The last time we had an unbeaten um, November tour With was you, 20, 2013. Well Good stuff. Yeah. If we don't, if we don't have, if we don't win three out of three, would this be? Would this not be seen as a successful tour? Oh, it's been a very successful year, yeah. in my view. Yeah. In my view, I hope it won't happen. But I think that I think that both Scotland and England are going to be tighter than we expect. I agree. Uh, but I'm, I hope we've got the, 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 the well, we've certainly got the ability to get through those. Um, and Wales is when we can actually mix it up. I yeah. Think. Yeah, I've got the same feeling. Look, I mean, we South Africans, we're going to be disappointed, but I don't think it would take away from the success. No. And the evolution that the team's gone through this year. Yeah. But like I think it would be a hard pull to swallow for all South Africans to lose S against England. Not England, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, think, I, think, <laughs> I think, you know, uh, that's going to be our biggest challenge for me. I think yeah. this weekend, Scotland's a great side. They play exciting brand of rugby. I just yep. think it's lobsided because mm. their weakness is our it's strength. Our, our pack. So we, we've got the ability to put them in a box and ask them questions that they can't answer. England yes. next week, I think, will be a tougher challenge. The, um, I, I just I, I remember 2009. We had such a good year, mm. winning the Lions yes. series, beating the yes. All Blacks three yes. times. Yes, then right. we got end of year two and you lose to Ireland and France, and it, yeah. it puts a damper, it damper on on Coming a very home. successful yeah. year. Oh, no. And and I think this team has just shown such professionalism in the way that they approach every single game. Uh, I do think that you know if they don't get three out of three, it'll be it'll be very disappointing. Bring it this way, like I mean New Zealand. If you think back, like those two games are. It's That's bloody hard. hard to get a result out of two of those games, no, no. France and Ireland. You might be able to turn one over. Oh, yeah. We've yeah. got a soft tour compared with theirs. With the others, well, yeah. I mean, you think of England to kick <coughs> off and then, yeah. and then France and Ireland, France, cheap. That's yeah, big. Um, 
obviously Sears, Sears has been in the in the media um, last couple of weeks. Um, you know, it adds to the pressure of being national captain. You appointed Gary Tashman as, as and yeah. he was one of the most yeah. successful captains in the in, in the history of South African rugby. Um, what qualities does a great captain possess, and who do you see as the next next captain? Yeah, and selfishness is uh, is by far the most important. I think not thinking about yourself, thinking about your teammates, doing your best to to get the best coaching and the best information from your teammates to the coaches and from your coaches to the teammates. So trust and and unselfishness. So I think all the you know I think that probably. Um, John Smith is an example of that. I think really Gary Tashman's definitely an example of that. Sia Khaleesi is unbelievably open with his decision making. He wants to get input from other people. He likes it. Um, and he does think about the, the rest of the team. So I think those are, those are very important. It's interesting that Rassi has changed the captaincy when Sia's not there so often. Yeah, you know, yeah. we've seen... We've Bongi have a go to Salman's had a go. Salman's had a go. We've had um, yeah, Peter Steff to Toys yeah. had a go. Yeah. Eben's had a go. Um, I think Pollard right back might yeah. have had a go as captain. So there, there, uh, there are a number of players who've been given the opportunity, yeah. but it's it's uh, it's not the same as Sia, who who encapsulates a, a good captain mm -hmm. with his personality, in my opinion. Totally agreed. Yeah, I think uh, it's a hard one. We always sit there and like, who's the next captain? And, like, we keep on falling back on players who's done an interim job. You keep yeah. on going back to Eben, and I know Eben. I don't. And the same age as here. Same yeah. age as here. Yes, exactly. And you think Peter Steff de Toy does a job because all of them do a job anyway. Because Sia doesn't play f yeah. through sixty mm. most weeks. Yes, so, that's true. You yeah. know, like the captaincy does change hands. You know, on every every weekend, but. Yeah, it's hard to see. And also that relationship, the, the current crop of guys with Rassi's got a special bond. They believe in, mm. in the plan and they mm. stick to that plan. And Rassi's got to build trust in the next generation of yep. leaders to take that forward. I don't know who that might exactly. be. But, you know, like it's, it's tough to see anyone standing up and doing it permanently like Sia's doing it. So, yeah, that will probably, that shift will probably have to come. And I think like, all next the, like Sia's captaincy happened it happened sort of in a in a false swoop you know, no yeah. one really thought of Sia as the next no. captain he was the captain yeah. and now it's the captain and look where he's gone so I think you know maybe we've just got to wait for the transition to happen naturally yeah, yeah we'll just just well, wait what just next wait. year next yeah. year next year what have we got we've got um Spain and who it, Italy yeah, isn't it Italy, Italy. Italy our games yeah. home games here it must be good for you to see the rise of Italy oh, I'm happy for them yeah. I'm so happy for playing them. Some uh, honestly nice they're playing rugby, some yeah. great rugby and you know I'd also say Congratulations to Franco Smith. Didn't yeah. get credit out of what he did with that, um, with the yeah. academy and, yeah. and preparing youngsters for how tough uh, Test how, Match Rugby was. How tough is Benetton to beat over there? Gee, yeah. Uh, they put team. up a proper, proper 10, fight. 10, 11 Italian internationals in that oh. side, and they are good. They tackle, they're physical, they're well organized, line out scrums. They're a good team, and, and you know, the, in the last uh, Six Nations, they surprised two teams, yeah. and I think, did they draw with With, with France, France? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, beat Wales. Yeah, that's brilliant. Eh? Um, I don't know why Freddie put this in here, but are you still haunted by that Stephen Larkham drop goal? No, 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 I'm not at all. I think he, I mean, I, I, you know, I, it happens in life. You, 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 lo you lose. I, I regret other things about that. Uh, not having Gary there captaining the team, I think, was a much bigger problem than that drop goal. So I regret that far more than Larkham doing yeah. something extraordinary. I think he was trying to kick a dead, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I must have like, happened I'm, to go I'm, through I'm, the pulse. I'm still hounded because I checked yeah. the replay and I couldn't believe he dropped it like that. I know. Yeah. And as and it, it hits it, the ground, it, it, it went like that. Yeah. It, it, it's, you know, a rugby ball it, with this sort of momentum. It was it unbelievable. That's still no, the drop call. I, I yeah. still <coughs> corrected that Larkham drop. Yeah, I think, I think one other. Has he? Yeah. Oh. Jeez, that was, that, I mean, that broke my heart. As a well, it, was a, it, it was a final. Honestly, yeah. Jean, that I knew that if we managed to get through that game, we were <coughs> going to smash France. We just yeah. beat them the year before in, in 1907, yeah. I think, by 50-odd points at Parc de France. So they would have been, I mean, partying after beating the All Blacks until that was Wednesday. Their final, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it was whoever beat, if, if we'd won the game, we would have won the World Cup. Australia beat us. They went through to win the World Cup. So it was disappointing from that. That is life, unfortunately. Uh, we've it lost is. so many games that we never should have. <laughs> Let's not get Why into not? that. Let's go <laughs> for predictions for the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Ireland versus New Zealand. I've, I've you said already Ireland said Ireland. Ireland. You said, said New said Zealand. Mix, yeah. England, Australia. <clears throat> England. England. Yeah. Italy, Argentina. Oh, that's a good one. 
Argentina. Can we, can, can we get a heads up what Argentinian side's yeah. going to pitch up for this weekend? No? no idea. Is it their first test? They haven't had warm ups. So. No, it's uh, first test. I think, I th oh, that's close. <laughs> that's, 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 very, the that's one a tough weekend. one. It is. Eh? Uh, oh, well, I'm going to be patriotic. Italy, Italy. I'll go Argentina. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Wales, Fiji. Uh, go Fiji. I, th oh. I, th I tell you what, when Fiji did hold on to the ball against Scotland, yeah, they made them very, look yeah. very average in defence. Even in the World Cup, but I think Wales at home. Geez, Wales. He's like it. If Wales can hold on to the ball, well, let's go Wales. Wales. Wales for that one? You, I'll go Wales. Go Wales also, as well. I think there's a younger generation of Welsh guys <coughs> too that are. Their URC teams are better yeah, than they were. Better, hey? yeah. More competitive. Yeah. And then on Sunday, Scotland versus South Africa. Yeah, South Africa by 10. Yeah, nice. because the same, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it will be tight for large parts. Also, like in games like these, you want the box to have control. Mm. If we lose control, it's going to be hard to keep them quiet because the way they attack. Who's our 9? Who's our 10? Yeah, yeah we, it's so difficult to, to say what's going to happen. Know. We don't had, know what the team is We've had five different yet. number nines, so yeah. any one of those yeah. five. And then yeah. they don't pick them, they pick Cheslin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was city was. And another two scrum offs yeah. on the bench. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, guys, sadly, that is all we have for today. Oh, it's been wonderful. Nick, thank you very much for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, Sean. Thank you very much. Nick, thank Hello. you. Hello. Pleasure. Pleasure. you again. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely to be here. And guys, next week we've got a very special show for you, especially or a special one from uh, London where Shimmy is on holiday uh, <laughs> traveling. And then on the weekends he chats a little bit of rugby as well. But we've got a special box office next week from London, hosted by Shimmy again. We had loads of fun here today. Go book on Sunday. Hopefully we get yep. a good result there. But for now, the box office <laughs> is <laughs> <It's> closed. <laughs> <laughs>